Uh, what does someone have to do to get a make a sticker off you? So. Be pleasant. That's all it takes. And follow the channel. <laughs> like and subscribe. Right guys, we are at the 4x4 Expo. So many have asked where do we buy our winches from. People know we use red winches, people know we use good winches. This is Gwyn Lewis everybody that I talk highly about on the show. So as you can see here, these are all, we call them the shit shields. Or more. Morning man. We're going to start looking busy anytime soon. Or, busy. Yeah. <laughs> good to see, good to see. ready for the horse. Hi guys, I'm Dave for those of you that don't know me and today we're at the 4x4 Expo in Stafford and check out our lovely stand. Right guys, we are at the 4x4 Expo and we'll go through some of the cars we brought down. Uh, here we've got Scram 90, 200 TDI. This one's been built to go to the Scram Africa Rally through Morocco and everything. Um, you'll see it on other videos. We've got the 200 TDI engine. We've got the inside that's been retrimmed by Mark, all the Alcantara dash. Um, and yeah, no, should be good for the rally. Um, over here, we've got Ethos, uh, one of the sort of original LS LS3 cars. Um, so yeah, LS3, um, we've got Ethos Grey, uh, nice sort of flat colour, it's lovely really. Um, and again, custom interior, banded steels, uh, and just a really tasteful car really. It's, um, yeah, it's quite suited to a lot of people. Um, now this, Project Dano, one of my favourites. We've got Corvette LT1, and this is just, yeah, bringing it into sort of 21st century levels now with the V8s. Really tunable, really modern, and yeah, it's a very good swap. And of course, we've got the AP brakes, some massive stoppers for you. Um, we've also got the SMC wheels, and custom interior, and yeah. All black, just, yeah, lovely car. Um, over here, we've got Captain Ratty's car. Um, yeah, again, with Scram, going off to Morocco, Africa, doing the Scram rally. Um, this car did this last year, successfully. Um, and I think Dave and Ratty are planning to do it again. Um, and yeah, there's another video online of when they went down to Morocco and Africa and did it. And yeah, in, uh, in the not too distant future, we'll be doing another engine swap. Maybe won't tell you just yet, we might just keep that a bit of a secret. But um, yeah, at some point, you'll see a bit more of this car. Yeah, look good, man. You look good on camera. It's beautiful, mate.
<laughs> looks really good. So many have asked, where do we buy our winches from? People know we use red winches, people know we use good winches, and we've got Sam here from Goodwinch, and people asked actually earlier on the store, what winches on the front of Scram 90, and that is, what was it? TDS 9.5, um, it's, it's probably the biggest seller for us. Yep. It sells everywhere, all over the world. It's a great winch, and it's just simple and reliable. It's not overly technical, and Everybody loves it. Um, there's different variations of it. And it's not, it's not too expensive either, is no, it? No, it's, it's well priced um, and there's upgrades to it. So this is standard form. Um, below, you've got an air free spool, you've got bow two powered. So you've got loads of options and there's always the spares, spares and backup. Can you change these for like bow motors and stuff? Yep, yep. so this is, this is a bow two powered. So that is the same winch, they are identical. Um, so if it's not enough, you can just add an extra yeah. yeah, so yeah, you can put a Bow 2 Plus on it or Bow 1 and just keep going on from there. And we also do a bigger drum, so you can have more more winch, yeah. more, more sorry, winch rope. Um, but yeah, just as far as you want to go, as fast. Yeah. Another good tip, guys, if you're running a winch, so is this plasma or what would this be now? This is Dyneema. Yep. Uh, well, sorry, this is Fortuna. So we do two types of ropes. Um, this is Fortuna, and there we have the Dyneema, which is blue. Um, the Fortuna is a new rope for us. We've only been doing it in the last maybe a year or something like that you i, I believe yourself you've had quite a lot of it yeah so um, we use um we service um knacker trucks as they call them so like meat lorries so when cows and fallen stock we pull it into the back of the trucks using this rope because it's soft on your hands and it's safe if it snaps it just hits the floor it doesn't whip you take your hands off etc well the wire rope will you know potentially can hurt you and it's, it's not good for anyone to use really um it has a purpose but unfortunately not as much as it did so so if you want a yeah. winch guys Give Sam a call at Goodwinch yep. and get one ordered. Sorted. Sweet. Too late now. I'm not. So if you haven't bought your raffle ticket yet, guys, make sure you buy your raffle. The raffle is only £50 per ticket. We've got about a thousand tickets left, so get your ticket today. So many of you have wanted to know, so I'm not good at doing that, what shaft we use in the gearboxes. So this is so Luke here from Loft Clutches and Loft Brakes had this shaft, he makes this shaft for us and this basically goes in the back of the gearbox that sends the power to the transfer case. So which one's this? Is this like the third taper? Yeah, this is the extreme output shaft. Yeah. So a bolt goes through the middle of there, it's got a little adapter spigot that lives in the back, that goes into the back of the box, that goes on, bolt down the middle, job done. But we've gone through, like what's this, number three tape? Yeah, so I've modified it ever so slightly in a few different iterations, and that's the final design that I'm happy with. So if you're having issues with that clunk, you know, every time you put it into gear, there's a dunk. That's because here there's a two-piece normal adapter. So we get rid of that and fit this, and that gets rid of that, and it's also harder material than it'll last. There you have it. That's it.
Right, so here we are at the Alive tuning stand. Alive support us with remaps, tuning, anything. If I've got something that's wrong, I normally ring Gary or Stu, and I'll say, look guys, what's going on here? This car's doing this, coughing, rattling. I'm gonna give you an example. Last week we had a 2.4 TDCI that we rebuilt the whole top end on. And I'm not gonna mention the company's name on the back, but anyway, it's crap. So I called Gary, I said, can you sort this out? and the map was absolutely shocking. So it caused the engine to detonate. So we rebuilt the whole top end of the engine and the customer's now happy. So I'm here with Stu from Alive Tuning. And so what do you do, Stu? So I'm the dyno operator for Alive Tuning. Um, I do a por small portion of the tuning for Alive, some of the race car stuff. Mostly it's Gary Wood uh, that tunes all the Land Rovers, etc. But it, I'm the dyno man, essentially. Everything uh, from strapping the vehicle up on the dyno, health checking the vehicle, um, go through power testing and basically I make Gary Ward work for his money. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there we go. That's good though because I can't find anyone else, you know, like let's say all the tuners here now that I see dyno in cars like you guys do and well there it is, proof in the pudding, isn't it? Well, I had a perfect question earlier on today. What makes you different from other tuners? Yeah. And basically we prove all of our own work um, in the Land Rover scene. Yeah. We have our own in-house in in rolling roads yeah. Uh, which is also recognised by the 750 uh, car club, motor yeah. club. So that's lots of guys that take the racing seriously, um, that are governed by horsepower. So, so it's horsepower, calibrated again, regularly. it's calibrated. Yeah. Um, it was actually calibrated this week, just gone, yeah. um, by Maha as well. I definitely think we should bring one of ours and then we can, um, it's all proven then, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. So if you want to- There's no uh, bullshit when the figure comes out, is it? That's, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so if you want to uh, know your horsepower and uh, would like some sort of proof of tuning or, yeah. um, or a health like check. This. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. Work, it? Yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. It's work of Does art. Does that give you more torque in the world of um, for this length? For this turbo setup, for that something to flow nicely for that turbo, it's actually required. But um, on a turbo that's not being pushed to this cup, capability um, it just lowers helps to lower EGT yeah. it does help give a, a better spread of power throughout the whole range really power and torque so what is this a VNT on this one yes it is yeah and we can you we uh, we control the wastegate on there or the actuator yeah. on there um, with the that ECU looks like a 184 turbo to me I'm not sure if I can say exactly what it is you'd have to ask <laughs> Gary <laughs> Gary did you borrow this turbo off a of BMW did you borrow that turbo off a of BMW no, the compressor housing. That looks like a 184 housing to me. Is very much so, yeah. but yes, it's machined. It's yeah. modified, yeah. yeah Recognise this here, this little way. Yeah, um, you're bang on there. Where the vac number sits, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah, that's that's. Are you pleased with this? Right. Very, yeah. very pleased. We've got another version of that actually on the desk in my office right now, yeah. uh, ready to go. We've got a, an all new cylinder head again to go up to take this to another level. Yeah. So, very, very exciting things to come yet with this. Cool. Really excited about it. It's, uh, we've broken so many boundaries with it. It's been a yeah. very long, painful road, but why not? I'll bring you a BMW soon, I think. Let's do it. <laughs> Sweet. That'll do.
Yeah, we don't notice, yeah. <laughs> which, which one we have in itself? This one here. Oh, it's on the expensive one. This one on the end? Right, Dave's blocking the way. So here we are on Winchester Gear Stand at the Stafford 4x4 Expo. We've shared a stand today. I was a bit lazy in booking it, so Tom booked it for me. So this is Tom, everybody. It's been everybody. a good day. Been yep. a good day. Um, so Tom's had a good day. If you can tell there, uh, the shelves are looking empty. We've done a little prank and we played it. We made out that someone stole the diff earlier. As all of you know, I use Tom's products. They're fantastic. Nothing's ever let us down. And the reason I use Tom's products is if you listen to this, Look how tight that is. There's a number of companies that have supplied me in the past and they're absolute dog. Okay, so Tom supplies us from now on. We use nothing but Tom's stuff. He gives 12 months warranty. Two years warranty with the stage twos. Yep. Um, minimum year warranty on anything that we do, but the stage twos, we always put those at two years. We've tested several now to 500 brake horse comfortably with them and um, we've not had any issues with that, so you can race it, you can drive it hard, whatever you want to do with it, it's fully covered. So what do you do in there, Tom, to make it strong? So what we've done is taken the, the bones of the LT230 and worked out all its usual common faults. So not only are they single sleeve casing on the intermediate shaft, we've sleeved the bearing housing behind the speedo, which is a common fault of uh, failure. Um, heavy duty intermediate shaft, higher capacity sump, and the the main thing about these stage twos is the limited slip diff that sits in them. Ashcroft limited slip diff, absolutely fantastic. We've probably built 500 or more with this limited slip diff in now, and we've never seen one of those fail. So they, they really are worth the money. And What's the USA yeah. spec that you've done for me now? The What's US happened? spec is one above. So in the US spec, that has every component of the transfer box, aside from the casings, brand new. So, brand new gear set in there. Um, they have a 300M output shaft on the US spec, and they also have a triple sleeve casing. So, it's just a little bit more, you know, obviously we warranty all the products, and they, they, they are built to the highest standard, but when anything is going out to the States, and that's why we've called it the US mm. spec, it can't come back. It needs to be 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why we've built it to, to the well, top. That's why we've asked them because we don't yeah. want, you know, these cars being over £100,000, we don't want any comeback. So no. I've asked Tom, what else can we do to it? And he says, Dave, they're the best of the best. So We're talking about adding another breather, yeah. aren't we? You know, because when, when we're yeah. running them as, as hard as what we do, yeah. uh, a second breather point would be a good idea. So we're just talking about where we're going to put that, yeah, yeah. where that's going to be a good location to... Uh, Improvising, it, improvising yeah. and overcoming yeah. issues. We can do a, a short output housing as well um, for steep prop angles yeah. to cut those out. And there's another couple of little bits that we're, we're looking at, constantly looking to improve them. Um, but the, the, the most popular product that we do, um, we stand by them, they're good. Yeah. Diffs have been a good day as well. Done plenty of those and I'm hoping to bang a few in your van as well yeah. before you go home today. Talk um, about this one, so this is a new product, isn't it? The newest one is this one here. So the beauty about this is the peg casings uh, up to now, and we will continue to use these ones because um, built by Nigel Barker, these casings, fantastic job of welding them up. But Ashcroft have recently done this brand new casing. So they've cast it from new, 
and they put enough material onto it to peg that without having to do any of the welding of that. Um, so that's an out of the box job, isn't it? Yeah, and we were, we were a bit skeptical about this casing at first because we didn't know how good it was going to be and how well it was going to set up. Um, but building it last week, it, it just built up beautifully. Yeah. You know, the shimming of it was, was excellent. Um, test one, we? So we're really pleased with those and think they're going to be a, a popular thing. Yeah. So if you want the best diffs, guys, give Tom a call give or give a me shout. a call. We carry a large stock. Yeah. And transfer cases, same again. So there you have it, guys. If you want the best of the best, give these guys a ring. So ladies and gentlemen, this is Mark from Swepco. He supplies us with the best oil we can possibly put in our transmission. So diffs, transfer cases, engines in fact, we're now putting that in. So tell us a bit about this oil, Mark. So this is a demonstration we've been doing on a standard 8090 EP gear oil to show the difference of cohesion and adhesion in a Swepco oil compared to a good quality off off the shelf market oil. So this is a, a, an EP90 that you'll find in most of your motor factors and everything. And if you watch, you'll see building up in the whisk, a bit of a crude old story, but you see the bubbles building up. Those bubbles in a diff actually convert to foam. And that foam acts as an insulator and traps the heat in the diff, removing the ability for the oil to do one of its main purposes, which is cool. So this is the Swepco, exactly the same viscosity, but this is the Swepco 8090 uh, EP gear oil. And you'll you hear a different sound perhaps from the mic, but you'll also see that there isn't as much bubbling or foaming forming, but the most dramatic is how the oil has actually climbed up the whisk. That's showing the cohesion and adhesion properties of this particular gear oil. Uh, really important, which is shown quite well in this gear demonstration. So this is how a transfer box or a, a differential will actually lubricate itself. The bottom of the gears sit in the oil and as they spin, it pulls the gear oil up. And you can see on both oils, the oil actually following the teeth of the gears and coming around. The difference is, I don't know whether you see on the video, but you can see the amount of spray coming off the standard oil. Yeah, and you can see a line forming around. You're not seeing that on the swept coat. It's staying where it should. And most dramatically, it can be seen if you take the, um, the cog, the gear out of the oil, where the Swepco is staying on the gears and keeping them lubricated. Like clinging, it, isn't it? Yeah, and you can see the top section where it's actually spraying off. So that happens all the time in your diffs and your gearboxes. And again, you can see the gear oil has gone quite milky uh, from the foaming and the, the bubbles building in it. So although they all match the same specification standards, the performance above that is exceeded by the Swepco. It gives you a much better EP protection and due to the adhesion and cohesion, dry starts, uh, running is avoided. So what, is, what model is this? So this is 201. It's a uh, mineral oil. This one? Yep. Uh, perfect for Land Rover, uh, Rover, Salisbury diffs. How much is uh, one of these roughly? Uh, I'm not sure. You have to check with Tom. So one of those is £25. Is it plus fat, Tom? Yes. So, but it will have a considerably longer life than the, the, the standard oil.
So here we are with, um, this is Gwyn Lewis everybody, that I talk highly about on the show. So as you can see here, these are all, we call them the shit shields or mud shields to be professional. <laughs> so, you know, we're bang on about looking after your bulkheads after I've charged you a pretty penny for making them pretty. So Gwyn's developed this whole range over how many years, Gwyn? Oh, this would be since 2010 I started yeah. doing these for resale, mm. but prior to that, yeah. we were doing it for the challenge cars, yeah. cut them with a jigsaw. Okay. Yeah, just for yeah. the one-off sales, and they just took off, a bit like you, in yeah. a shed. Yeah. You've got, you got the saying though, haven't you? Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, they've just taken off mad. I mean, everybody wants to look after their Defender. Yeah. Um, it's quite nice, a client, Andrew, he said to me, he said he wants to protect his investment and yeah. I thought that's a nice way of looking yeah, at it. Exactly. So these here, what's, which is your new one? These, isn't it? That's a new one we've just yep. done. Front, front bumpers. Uh, so if you're running broad, DRLs, yeah. you're like in the back of your bumper, that clips up on the inner arch, isn't it? Yeah. So this stops the, the mud and the stones hitting the front of the, the yeah. DRLs. That slides in, up in the arch. You can see the bumper. All the muck and salt yeah. just sits on the bumper all the time. And when especially you wash DRLs, it's it? just swill them out. Yeah, it? especially with DRLs, they're expensive yeah. things. And if you want to take them from there, two screws, pop it off. Actually comes. That's one thing with all these, they do come from there quite easy, yeah. don't they? Oh yeah, it's fun to fit the, it's the tubs in the rear, they're fun, but yeah. the rest of it. Another good thing that we get from Gwyn, as you've seen on the Scram 90 is his twin alternator kits. So if you're running your beer fridge and the... If you, you want like extra Marin. power, you've got two alternators. You can get a bit more power than a DC to DC charger yeah. or a split charger. But not all vehicles can have them because of aircon yeah. again, isn't it? Well, there is that, isn't yeah. it? But And then the sumo bars you do, isn't it? Yep, so nearly every build has got these sumo bars. Stainless steel? Stainless steel and heavy yep. duty we do. These are stainless steel on show. And what you notice here, Gwyn's made these heavy duty track rod ends. As we spoke in the last episode about your life is in that front link, isn't it? If that yeah. front link snaps or this snaps, or your track link snaps, your front wheels are going to do this and it's game over. Basically, here's, uh, here's the different types of track with ends. Heavy duty. Basically, they've got no undercut in the thread. The thread is all the way to the end. Now, that's a Delphi. Perhaps your camera won't pick it up. See how thin it is there? Can you see there to there? It's got like an undercut. Basically, that's where they bend and break. You've got rid of that as well, haven't you? That, isn't it there? It's yeah, really that's it. This is half inch UNF thread, and these are M12 with an undercut. I mean, to sell th these this, is, this is your off road lads that are yeah, abusing, yeah. really. They're, you know, hitting things hard, big tyres. Uh, and these are the length order. The, these are nice ones because they're greasable. And we fit our poly boots. These. Yeah, we do them as well. We do them to stop the. Uh, Spring chatter, yeah. you know, the uh, you get residents here, yeah, especially yeah, for these drinking, big, well, bad, yeah. put a Cummins in, the whole thing's wrapped. Well, we've had a problem with the lower room ones because yeah, the springs are that's bolted the, back. That's what's for, yeah, that's what's for. Yeah. 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 I mean, to be fair, we haven't been selling them for a long time, yeah. but we've had people with progressive springs touching, that's it. vibration, yeah. you get, is it residence noise you call yeah. it? We've had like a clanking and we, we couldn't find it where it's coming from. It's like playing the guitar. Yeah. This is a great structure as well, so these galvanise. Galvanised. Yeah, so, if you're doing your rebuild, it's a, it's a must in our opinion. Every spring yeah. kit we fit. The, these are the seats. Yeah. They're the spacers. They're the seats. And we've just packed all the shock mounts away. Shame, oh, that's really. Fine. Yeah. But the, these boots are a big, big seller now. Yeah. Uh, as you know, rubber doesn't last. Yeah. Perishes. The so anti-roll bar bushes. We always fit Gwyn's version that's of these it. because yeah. they're common when the anti-roll bars clunking around and working at funny angles. They split. And then your MOT guy is going to slap you with a big failure. And they twist, you see, where yeah. a rubber just pulls and twists, doesn't it? Yeah. We've got the new clip now for the A-frame ball joint boot as well. Mm. Nice good. Yeah, we only had these in last week, the, yeah. the actual uh, A-frame clip. They're nice, they're greasable as well. Yeah, for the drop links and the anti-roll bar. Uh, People like to grease things on the Defender, don't they? Yeah. Agricultural. So there you have it, guys. If you want any parts, give Gwyn a ring, OK? There you have it. Cheers, Gwyn. Right. Take care. Thank you. Smash. All right. <laughs>
So there you have it guys, what an awesome show here at Stafford 4x4 Expo. Thank you to the organisers, it's been fantastic here, we've had a great turnout, it's just been back to back all day, I want to clone myself and I'm now very tired and I want to go home. So thank you to all my team, thank you for Ben for filming and thank you to all of my suppliers, you know who you are. Thanks again guys, see you soon, bye bye.